So let us take a look at higher order derivatives. Now there's nothing new here except the concept itself. If we talk about a higher order derivative, we're talking about a derivative of a derivative. Because always remember, if we start with a function, the derivative of a function is again a function. So I can take its derivative and we keep being able to take the derivative of a function and the next derivative and the next derivative. So first let's talk about notation. If I take the second derivative, so if I've got a function and I take the derivative and I derive it again, we've got what is called the second derivative. Now there's a lot of different notations. So I just want you to take note of all these different notations, but they all mean the second derivative. Now, when we get further and further and more derivatives, we start struggling with notation. I can't, if I want to take the fifth derivative, I can't make a y with five primes. So that notation doesn't work and the f prime x doesn't work anymore. So what we do, if I want the sixth derivative, I would say it's six like that. So the six is in brackets, so we can't confuse it with an exponent or something. It's just the sixth derivative. So that's just the notation we use for derivatives. So just take note of the different notations for higher order derivatives. So let's start straightforward. We've got a polynomial. We want the second derivative. Now you first find the first derivative. That gives you 8x cubed plus 6x minus 7 using our differentiation rules. So once we have the first derivative, we want the second derivative. So it's the derivative of the derivative. So 8 times 3 is 24x squared plus 6. So that is finding the second derivative. The next one asks for the third derivative. The notation is just a bit different, but we just want the third derivative. So if I've got y in that format, now we will have to just look at the chain rule when we find the derivative, because I've got the root of x plus 1. So my first derivative, dy dx, and I'm just sticking to the notation that's asked in the question. So the y dx is 2 times the derivative of the square root of a function is 1 over 2 times that root times the derivative of the function. Now, my function is x plus 1, and the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1. So, I can just multiply it with 1. So, there we go. Now, when you ask for higher order derivatives, it's always handy and recommended to see if you can simplify the derivative first so that your next derivative doesn't become more complicated. So, this we can just write as 1 over the root of x plus 1. Or you can say x plus 1 to the power minus a half. That means the same when I see it like that, it's just easier for me to find the next derivative. So d squared y over dx squared, the next second derivative is then the derivative of the first derivative, and I get minus a half x plus 1 to the power minus subtract 1. So it's minus a half minus 1, so it's minus 3 over 2, times the derivative of x plus 1, which is just 1. So that one doesn't make a difference. And then the third derivative is... 3 over 4 times x plus 1 to the power minus 5 over 2. So these are higher order derivatives. Now you can imagine that if we're dealing with something a bit more complicated, then the derivatives come a bit more complicated. So let's look at this example. The second derivative of this quotient, we've got y equal to x plus 1 over x minus 1. So the first thing is we know we'll need to use the quotient rule. So let's take a look. To find dx of y, the first derivative, is with the quotient rule. Start at the denominator. Denominator square. Write that one down. And then I go. Derivative of the top is 1 minus the top or the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is 1. Now, I don't want to, at this stage, jump in and get that second derivative. Why? Because it's messy. We can tidy it up and make it better. So if we clean that one up, we get x minus 1 minus x minus 1. So what I get is x minus x minus 1 minus 1. So it's minus 2 over x minus 1 squared. It already looks way better. Now, if I try to differentiate it in the first way, format, it would have been much more complicated. Now, you can rewrite that as minus 2 times x minus 1 to the power minus 2 to make the second derivative easier. So your second derivative is going to be 4 times x minus 1 to the power minus 3, times the derivative of x minus 1, which is just 1. So there we go. 4 times x minus 1 to the power 3, or you can write it as 4 over x minus 1 cubed. Same thing. 
Now, if you look at the original question, we want that second derivative where x is equal to minus 1. So all that means is substitute x equal to minus 1 in. And I've got 4 over minus 1 minus 1 cubed. So it's minus 2 cubed, which is minus 8. So I've got 4 over minus 8, which gives me minus a half. And whatever the function is, if you've got the first derivative, you can find the second derivative and so on and so on. So just make sure to tidy up the first derivative before you try and find the second derivative. And those are higher order derivatives.